Let me share the story about the time my mother and I discovered a homeless man living in our cottage basement. This was February of this year, 2021. We have a cottage about 45 minutes away from my parents' main home. It's not too far from Huntsville, Muskoka, Ontario. If anyone wants a visual. Thing is, it's completely unfurnished. The bedroom has no proper flooring and has a slight water leak right now. So there are plenty of fans and a dehumidifier running. As a result, one of us needs to check on the place at least every two to three weeks to empty the dehumidifier in the basement and make sure everything is okay. To describe the house layout a bit, the entrance to the basement is directly in front of the main entrance. It's a long skinny staircase down with a low roof. So you need to crouch on the way down. There is one crappy light bulb in the ceiling so it's always super dark down there. There's one big room, then two hallways branching off. One hallway leads to a bedroom, and the other leads to not only a second bedroom, but also a washroom. All of which are completely unfurnished and without lighting. The second hallway is much longer, and the rooms are just way off in the back corner of the basement and are completely dark. In other words, it's creepy looking. Okay, so let's get to the good part. The day it all went down. My mom and I are headed up there to empty the dehumidifier, have some lunch, and clean out some junk. We're slowly gutting the place. It had nearly been three weeks since we checked up on the place by this point. We stop at McDonald's beforehand and each got a filet of fish combo. We get into the place and put our food on the table, then turn the heat on. The first thing we do is run downstairs to turn the water on and check on the dehumidifier. After turning on the water, we head over to the dehumidifier and notice that there's hardly any water in it. It looks like it's only been running for a couple of days. There was still the regular amount of moisture on the ground, but it was strangely empty. My mom and I head upstairs and she grabs a phone to text my dad and asks if he stopped by the house to empty the dehumidifier recently. He said he hadn't. We were both puzzled as to why it looked so empty, but never considered there was a third person in the house with us. After heating up our food, we both sit down at the table and turn on the TV. About five minutes into our meal, we hear a massive bang downstairs. Almost as if someone stubbed their toe really badly on a cupboard or something like that. We instantly jump and look at one another with a freaked out look on our faces. The TV is still playing rather quietly. Then we hear the worst thing. We hear a small grunt downstairs. It was unmistakable. A human vocal sound. My mom whispers to me, Was that a person? And I smirk and nod my head yes. Although it was freaky at the moment, I wasn't really taking it very seriously for some reason. Looking back, this was pretty serious. And the person could have been very dangerous. I just told her, grab your jacket and let's head out to the car and call the police. We gather our stuff and I grab a kitchen knife on the way. And if you'll recall, the entrance to the basement is directly across from the main entrance to the house. So I had to make this peek around the corner and was fully expecting to see a person on a dark staircase. But luckily, it was just a series of stairs down into the dark abyss. Once we're out front, we jump into my car and she calls the cops immediately. Within three minutes, four cruisers show up and five cops got out. We told them what had happened and they headed down the driveway. They were in the house for probably about 10 minutes before the door opened. A couple of cops walked out and boom, the third cop brought out a short chubby guy with long black hair and pop bottle glasses. They brought him out handcuffed onto the front steps and another cop had a bag that looked like his belongings. We were in our car, which was set up the street a bit and facing away from the entrance to the cottage. But my mom was turned away as soon as he was brought up the driveway. She didn't want to get a good look at him as the whole situation was pretty unsettling for her. They loaded him in the back of one of the cruisers and took him away. One cop came over and spoke with my mom for a bit about the situation. Ultimately, my parents had decided not to press charges against the guy when it was all said and done. He was just sleeping on the cold cement ground 
with a small roll-out mattress. Even though there was a proper bed upstairs, this made us think that he'd been down the back alley in the unfinished bedroom for a while. We probably walked downstairs to empty the dehumidifier and turn on and off the hot water a number of times, and he was like 15 feet away in one of the bedrooms. He probably wasn't a bad person, and I'm personally at least a bit thankful he decided to empty the dehumidifier. Hopefully he lived in there for most of the colder months this past winter. We're just lucky it didn't turn out to be one of those crazy squatting situations. I was 14 years old when I had to live with my grandparents. I had to live with them because my sister was in college and my parents were divorced. They lived in this old bungalow type house. It was one story and we have stairs that immediately goes to the attic. An attic, which no one really uses. We just put stuff in there. It's too hot and stuffy up there. The sole window up there didn't really help. The attic had old creaky wooden floors that I remember that I have to polish with a coconut shell because that's how we do it here in the Philippines. That and my grandparents are very traditional. Anyways, my door room was near the stairs leading up to the attic. Like you open my door and then face right and the stairs would be immediately right there. I hated that every time I left my room because I would expect that something would be immediately crawling down from the attic. One night, my grandparents had to pick up my aunt's family from the airport, but because of hellish traffic here, they had to leave at 7pm, and their expected arrival back home would be at most 5am. So a 14-year-old girl would be alone at home the whole time. I told them I would be safe here. We lived in a gated community, and we have tons of guard dogs. Everything will be okay. Or so I thought. Before they left, we already had dinner. So I was stuck with cleaning the dishes. As I was doing that, I could hear a bunch of neighborhood dogs bark a lot. I didn't really think much of it, because the dogs always do that. When I finished cleaning up from dinner, I immediately had to lock every door and window and turn off all the lights before heading to bed. When I entered my room, the lights were on and it looked normal. My anime posters were on the wall, my closet was untouched, my bed was next to my barred, tinted windows. We had to tint them because I was on the first floor and my grandparents wanted to make sure that no one could peep into my room. They were barred too because my uncle, who used to use this room, always escaped through the window to go to parties. This was my grandparents' solution to that. Nothing was out of place to alarm me. Everything was normal until I turned off the lights. As soon as I turned off the lights, a silhouette of a man was illuminated by the streetlights outside. He looked like he had thick curly hair and a skinny build. I thought I was having hallucinations, so I turned on the lights again and he was gone. I turned them off again and he was back. I turned them on again and he was gone. And then I finally turned them off. And he wasn't there. I sighed in relief. I was just tricking myself, I guess. Or something else was casting the shadow. I double locked my door just to be safe. One lock was the doorknob, and the other one was one of those latch types. Then tucked myself in. It was hard to fall asleep when a lot of dogs are barking outside. They weren't our dogs, they were just the neighbors. But I was finally falling asleep when I heard something from above me moving. Something in the attic. I pushed the thought down. I'm tricking myself again. I hugged my pillow. It's just rats, I said to myself. These rats seemed heavy and were also pushing furniture around. My heart sank when I heard them hurriedly go down the stairs and stop at the bottom. I covered myself with my blanket and I waited for something. I was also wishing that my parents gave me a phone at a time like this. And suddenly, I heard my doorknob being gently fiddled. I wanted to vomit when I heard a click, followed by a quiet turn of the knob. The knob turned, but it didn't budge. When they noticed, they tried to push it. This time, 
I finally stood up, shaking. I was a kid, home alone with no phone, no means of defense. All I had that was saving me was this thick door from the old days. I softly pushed my body up against the door and locked everything up again. I didn't want to make a sound. I didn't want to scream. I didn't want him to know I was here. I don't know why he stopped, but he did. I didn't go back to bed. I just sat there at the door, waiting. It felt like forever. I heard the footsteps go upstairs, but I still sat there. I saw something moving in the corner of my eye, there, out of the window. The shadow was back. I forced myself not to look. All I could think of was that thank God they were barred. I don't remember what happened after that. I think I fell asleep, or I was too scared to even think straight. I just remember the next day, when my family and I were having breakfast, I casually brought it up to my grandfather, telling him that I think I heard footsteps in the attic last night. My grandmother scoffed, it's probably rats, I never brought it up again. I didn't want to worry them, but I do know this, our dogs were caged up near the gate and were far from my room, so they wouldn't have seen anything. The only dogs who were near my room were the neighbors. There was nothing outside my room that could cast a shadow that looked like a man, and lastly, the attic window was wide open. So back in 2010, I lived in a real dive of a place with four other guys. It was a triplex that the owner had converted into one house. The place was just short of being condemned, but we were all in our 20s and wanted a party house. So it totally worked for us. We threw so many parties that we just didn't notice a lot of stuff. Like when the spare bedroom window was smashed, we assumed one of our drunk friends did it by accident. And any time food went missing, Obviously, one of our drunk idiot roommates just stole it, even though no one fessed up to it. We also had a ridiculous problem with what we assumed were raccoons. All the damn time, we'd hear scratching and shuffling up on the roof. Every morning, we'd go out, and our trash would be all over the place. Well, after about a year of random messes, missing food and alcohol, and eerie scratches, one of my roommates and I were leaving the house at the same time for work. As we step outside... There's a familiar woman in our front yard. We've seen her a few times wandering the streets in the neighborhood, but never really paid her any attention. She's wearing one of my t-shirts and going through our trash can, tossing things on the ground she's not interested in. My roommate and I both freeze as we see the woman doing this, and she very slowly looks up at us. Her eyes are totally glassed over, and she stares at us with confusion all over her face. My eyes go wide as I recognize my t-shirt, and I go to open my mouth. When she says something that to this day has made me shudder, why are you living in my house? And that was all I could handle. I assure you, I'm not someone that is ever short on words, but this rendered me entirely speechless. My roommate and I stared at each other, eyes wide, got into our cars, and drove the hell away from our own home just to get away from that situation. That night, when we had all the boys together, we told them what happened, and we finally made the decision to investigate the roof. Turns out, we had a flat roof. It's not generally the kind of thing you think about. Most roofs are slanted, or have angles. Not ours. It was just a flat roof, like a two-story building got cut in half. You just couldn't see the top, because it had an awning, that blocked the flat roof from view around it. So for the first time, we climbed up there and discovered someone had been living on our roof. Many of our missing items were strewn all over. There was a makeshift bed, spare clothing, food, wrappers, water, and even books all just sitting there. We moved out shortly after that, but I've never forgot the look of that lady staring through me and asking what I was doing living in her house. Madame Roof Dweller, let's not meet again.
For some context, sometime in late 2019, I started seeing someone. We'll call him Shu. Shu seemed nice enough and was generally what appeared to be somewhat of a normal guy. He kept insisting we move in together, despite dating for only a few months, and the fact that I already owned my own house. That should have been enough to tell me to run, but no, I didn't. Shu started showing up my house late at night, without announcing himself or asking to be invited. At first, it wasn't too bad, but it became nightly, then he started lying for attention, even going as far as to claim a close friend had died. No, a close friend had not died. He'd showed up drunk and demanding attention and refused to follow my house rules. If I did let him in, he'd refuse to leave. Long story short, Shu's behavior kept getting worse and worse, showing up drunk from being at the bars all night during COVID, demanding my attention despite knowing I'm high risk. He tried one last time to get into my home, and I cut it off right there. I told him to leave me alone. The next morning, I got a call at 5am to come into work on my day off. I was annoyed but agreed. Then the call started, non-stop. I tell him to leave me alone and hang up again and again. When it was time to leave for work, I assumed it was my boss calling to tell me he was here to pick me up. It wasn't. It was Shu. Well, your boss is here for you. Click. Sure enough, 7am and he was camped out on my front porch and tried to grab me in broad daylight in front of my boss. This kind of behavior went on for nearly a week. My employees refused to let me walk home after he started showing up at my place of work at closing time and would try to cut me off when trying to get into my house. I found out that he kept calling because he could hear my phone ringing through the thin walls of my old home, trying to locate exactly where I was. Every day, I'd have upwards of 20 phone calls and 50 text messages. I finally called the police after he threatened I was too poor for a restraining order. The cop drew the line right there and took it as a direct threat to my well-being. When I got home that day, I noticed cigarette ash all over my porch and a hole burned into my patio chair. Soon after, I found a window in the basement forced open with a surgical mask on the floor. I told my roommate and my neighbors what had been going on and gave a description of Shu and to be on the lookout. Things quietened down after a few months. The phone calls from the call VPNs had finally stopped. I was in the car with my housemate earlier this week and I mentioned a smudge of the garage door. He parks in front of the garage, not in it. When he told me, yeah, I think a homeless guy was squatting in there for a while. Probably weeks, I found a bunch of clothes in there and then they disappeared a couple of weeks ago. My heart dropped into my stomach. I noticed tracks in the snow, too big for my housemates to have left, but thought, no way, couldn't be. I was shoveling snow all through the night for my neighbors all winter, and he was literally within arm's reach of me, able to see directly into the windows of my house. And yes, I scolded my housemate. I get that he's a guy, and doesn't really get it when a woman says he's dangerous. Call the cops if anything weird happens around the house. But come on, man. Shoo. I know you're still around. Let's not meet. For your sake. I've just recently moved into a decently sized two bedroom house with a full basement where a lot of my family's not so important belongings are still stored in boxes to be sorted through. Our house resides in a quiet neighborhood, but our elderly neighbors have advised us on some sketchy figures wandering about late at night. As there's a section of the neighborhood two or so blocks away that houses those who have no place to go. Fast forward to maybe two weeks ago. I had gone down to the basement to sift through my items and had noticed that a few random things on our tables, toolkit, 
binders, family photos, etc. had been opened and strewn about carelessly. Thinking another family member was sorting as well, I picked them up and went about my task. Over the following week, I would hear strange banging coming from the basement. Sort of like our washing machine lid being shut. Now I'll admit I'm skittish and my mind sometimes jumps to the worst possible outcome. So I became worried. At the time, I was the only person home, so I grabbed my pepper spray and went to check. Stupidly, might I add. Our basement has two full rooms, plus two adjoining smaller rooms. One of which has a door that I myself have never opened. It is also barred by a beam of some sort, but the door stands slightly ajar. I assume it's just some small storage area. Upon turning on all of the lights and cautiously looking around, I'd seen that a few more of our belongings and boxes that weren't unpacked yet had been opened and laid on the floor. What concerned me the most was that our basement door that leads outside to the side of our house was unlocked. That is not something my family would forget about. Further inspecting the basement proved that no one was inside, though I didn't pry open the barred door. Telling my father about this, he said that the noises were probably the heater popping, and perhaps he forgot to lock the side door after taking the trash out. I'm not so convinced on this theory, but I really hope I'm not correct in thinking that someone may have found their way into our home and has been scavenging through our basement. As of writing this, nothing has happened, but hearing people walk on the streets shouting on some nights has made me uneasy. I make sure the doors are locked every night now, and on a free day, I'll have my dad open the barred basement door just to put my mind at rest. I was in a single room apartment dorm with a roommate. We lived on the second floor. We had bunk beds and I slept on the bottom bunk. Just to give a quick layout, when you walk into our room, you immediately face our tiny kitchen. An L shape taking up the left wall in the left corner. To your immediate right would be the foot end of our bunk bed against the wall. If you go forward and to the right, that's where our desks are at. Closets in the bathroom to the far right. So when I'm laying in bed, I'm facing the kitchen. I have a clear view of the corner counter and our sink. Anyway, I used to sleep terribly and would wake up in the middle of the night. Multiple times a week. I usually just wake up in a daze and fall asleep after. This one particular night, I woke up to some soft sounds. I figured it was our neighbors in the next building or something. Because we always kept our kitchen window slightly open to let our room stay cool. Like I said, I woke up, and I opened my eyes just a little bit, and was about to grab my water when I saw some figures sitting on the kitchen counter. I didn't move or make a sound. I wasn't even that afraid. Just watching. I was in a half-asleep daze, just watching the person on my counter. It was a lanky guy, just sitting and looking at our cabinets. He wore dark clothes, maybe a grey sweater. He didn't move, and before I could process it, I fell back asleep. I told my roommate about it the next morning, and she thinks I saw a ghost, but I'm not sure. We locked our windows closed from then on, and just decided to buy a fan, and leave our bathroom window open instead. It was tiny, and one of those crank open ones. I've never experienced that since. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to summer camp in a village. There were around 30 kids, all between 10 and 13 years old, with six camp monitors, all in their 20s. We were staying in a relatively big house, which probably used to be a small boarding school or an orphanage of some sort. From the first week I arrived, I already started hearing stories about the attic and how the ghost of a kid 
He used to come to that summer camp, haunted it. I don't remember the story very well, but the kids would say that the squeaking of the wood you could hear at night was caused by the ghost of the dead boy moving around in the attic. However, at that age, I already knew ghosts didn't exist, and the squeaking was probably from the wind, so I wasn't particularly scared by that story. One day, however, I was talking to another girl about the ghost from the attic, a female camp monitor who was also around, so we asked her what she thought of the story. She didn't want to answer at first, but when we kept insisting, she got unexpectedly upset. Don't talk about that stuff. Seriously, it's not funny, she said. She left looking annoyed, and another monitor went to go talk to her. Since I thought this was all pretty weird, I later went to ask the other monitor about why she'd gotten upset. He was the one I was closest to. At first, he didn't want to talk about it. But I insisted, because I could tell there was something he was hiding from me. Finally, he said, all right, all right, I'll tell you. But you have to swear that you won't tell any of the other kids. I promise not to. And he went on to tell me the story. A couple of weeks before the camp started, the six monitors had been taken there to visit the house where we would be staying. They were shown around so that they would know where everything was and all that. Soon after the visit started, they heard the wood squeaking from upstairs. The girls in the group were a bit freaked out, but they all continued the visit. Later on, after visiting all the other rooms, they decided to go up to the attic. Here's where it gets weird. There were a bunch of covers on the floor, leftovers of food, and on the dusty floor, you could see human footprints. Basically, it looked like someone had been living there. I immediately regretted asking about it, and then had trouble sleeping for the rest of the camp. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give this a like, comment as well, let me know what you thought of the stories. If you're a first time listener, go ahead and subscribe. And once again, thanks for all your love and support. I really do appreciate it. So with that, I'll catch you in the next one.